Hey, just want to do a super quick video. I have my power supply set to 3.7 volts and I have it plugged into my Game Boy Micro here. Oops, dropping everything. Um, I found close, it, it, it's almost the right connector. It requires a little bit of modification before it plugs in without ruining anything. Um, well, actually I didn't find it. Someone else found it and linked it to me, uh, but I'll go ahead and post the link. I just wanted to have a video um, that I can reference back to when I update the spreadsheet. So on uh, low brightness, the Game Boy Micro at about 3.7 volts is pulling about 40 to 41 milliamps. And if we step up the brightness one level, it jumps up to 47 milliamps. Another level, 53 and a half. Another level, 50, almost 59. And then the max level is 66. I don't think it goes, yeah, it doesn't go any higher than that. So, let me crank up the volume too. I don't think that makes a difference. Oh, apparently it does. Now we're at 68 to 69 on uh, full volume, full brightness. And we'll bump the brightness back down to minimum. Again, 42, 43. Uh, but this is with the volume up. I'm going to turn the volume back down. I just wanted to do a quick power test because I actually tested one of my batteries in my battery tester and I got some results that didn't quite make sense to me. Uh, so I wanted to see if I could fill in the other variables and try and figure out why that is. Uh, basically, when I measured the uh, 480 milli or 460 milliamp hour battery, Come on, focus, focus you. Okay, maybe not. There it goes. Uh, 460 milliamp hour battery. I was getting between 150 and 190 milliamp hours. Now it could be entirely possible that my battery tester cannot test batteries this low of capacity. Uh, because the minimum setting is a 300 milliamp hour or a 300 milliamp load on the battery, which is very close to 1C. So it's actually kind of it. It's a lot higher than I'm comfortable with on these batteries. So I'm only going to test the one. But that is also the same battery that I did the runtime test on, not not this one. So I think it'll be okay. I am also going to test the uh, mod battery that I made a little while back. This one is lower capacity at 380 milliamp hours, but I want to see if it shows up as a higher capacity, uh, or at least you know maybe it is higher capacity because oh, dropping stuff. Um, because this battery is 15 years old, this battery is one year old, and this is a high performance drone um, like quadcopter battery, so it should be able to handle much higher current output. Uh, that being said, my battery tester should be able to get a more accurate read on this one. Uh, but there we go. Just wanted a quick quick video so I could uh, have something to reference back to in my spreadsheet. So uh, thanks for watching this quickie and have a good night. Actually, I do have one quick addendum. Um, well, not exactly quick. You know me. Um, this power consumption actually kind of makes sense given that I measured about 190 milliamp hours on my other battery. Uh, now that still seems a little bit low, but if we assume a linear voltage curve or a linear efficiency curve, um, that about makes sense. In my last video, I did measure, I don't know what, like six hours with this thing. And you know, if we do the math, this is just about five hours. So, you know, it might be cutting off a little bit too soon. I don't know. Either way, it's, it, it actually seems about right. I'm, I just popped the uh, other battery I have on the charger, so this is the one that I was testing. Uh, this is the one that measured about 180 milliamp hours. Uh, but I popped the other battery on the charger, and um, we'll see what that capacity is. And I'll, I'll just throw something in the, in the description here. I don't see a whole reason to make another update. But I did want to talk about the, um, the connectors that I'm using, these things. Uh, so I picked these up on eBay, 
someone who someone had linked these to me, the same person who actually sold me this Game Boy Micro originally. And these are, I think, as close as we can get to the right connector. They are not quite right. This one will work perfectly fine. This is the uh, male plug, will work perfectly fine on the female to connect up the battery. But the female plug, if you want to build your own battery, which is what I did during that video, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually probably just splice that clip into this video so that we have something, I don't know, a little bit more cohesive as far as battery mods go. And um, I wanted to talk about this plug in case you're not pulling the plug from your existing pat battery. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this off and unplug this here. And it was actually very, um, very finicky to get this right and to get it to plug in. If I put these two side by side, you can see that I kind of filed the top here because they almost line up. Excuse my dirty fingernail there. Uh, but this one, it's super hard to see. It's such a small feature. Let me find my screwdriver. So if we take a look at the uh, top left and right corners, you can see there's a very small square notch. And I'm just putting my screwdriver in. And these replacement connectors don't have that notch. These are just perfectly square on the top there. So what I did to fix that is I just took a file and shaved both the top left and right corners off and that allowed me to plug it in. Now I've been told you can just shove this whole connector in there and it'll work fine, but uh, it gives you a lot of resistance and that made me feel really sketchy to be honest. Um, and because it, you know, it, it feels like you're plugging it in the wrong way regardless of which way you plug it in, just as a uh, reference here, the negative or the black wire goes on top and the red or the positive wire goes on bottom, just like on an original battery here. And if you're going to plug it in, sometimes you can slip a fingernail in there, uh, but other times you, you have to use like a, a flat spudger tool or something to plug that in. Uh, but if you want to make your own battery mod like I did, uh, for this thing a while back, I'll go ahead and splice that footage into this video here, and um, well, enjoy. Thanks for watching. Okay, so it's just about to clean up for the day. Just finish up, take a break, etc., etc. Um, and I was looking around at projects on my desk, and I had a pretty dumb idea. So. In my last video with the Famicom Micro, I checked this battery and it was at like 0.3 volts or something. And yeah, I need to order another battery, but you know, let's see what we can do in the meantime, yeah? So if you have a battery at home, one of your consoles that's dead, best thing that you should do, and I don't recommend doing anything other than doing this, take that battery to an electronics recycling facility, give it to them. Don't do anything else with it. Don't, don't take it apart. Don't fuck around with it. Don't try and revive it. Just give it to them. It's not worth it. These things can explode if you fuck around with them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just not worth it, you know? It's your health and safety. It's not. It's not just oh well, it'll kill my Game Boy. No, it could explode in your pocket and burn you, or even leave it at home. Leave it on your desk. It explodes because it's fucking done, and uh, burns your house down. That sounds like a fun time to be had by all. Don't do it. Just. Get rid of the battery. I am going to get rid of this battery. I'm going to recycle it. But before I do that, I want to take it apart. Don't take apart batteries. Taking apart batteries is dumb. Okay. 
comment. I didn't mean to peel that off. Okay, there we go. So, the reason I wanted to do this, and I'm going to try to not work with any metal tools. Because I want this connector. I'm still going to recycle this thing. Just I just uh, need something from it first. And I want to get as much wire as I could. So this thing now, I'm going to insulate it and uh, bring it to Best Buy or whatever next chance I get because they take batteries for recycle. Favorite method of insulation. Cheap, easy, and removable, and whoever actually gets those recycled batteries from Best Buy, if you hate that me and other people do this, let me know. I'll stop doing it. But until then, I'm going to keep doing it, because it's easy. Okay, so I found this on my shelf. This is a 380 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. Same chemistry as the original, well, technically not, but close enough that it won't make a difference. The original is a 460 milliamp hour battery, uh, but I think we're going to be okay because the original didn't work at all. Oh, there we go. Only problem is I soldered on a different connector, and that connector is not going to work here. smarter thing to do would be to take this apart and then I can wire this directly up to the protection circuit in this battery, but I'm not going to do that because this thing is really, really securely packaged. I forgot to turn my iron on again. This is a Hobby RC battery. I'm guessing it's for either like a little drone, quadcopter or something, or controller, transmitter. I have a super tiny heat shrink. I'm going to cut off a couple pieces now while my soldering iron's heating up. Because, you know, you got to install the heat shrink beforehand. Oh, that's convenient. The wires are... Oh, wait, never mind. It's opposite of what I want. Well, let's fix that. That's why I wanted as much wire as I could get. Now this is not the proper method for splicing wires. The proper method is to strip off a whole bunch more. The hell? It says it's up to temperature. There it goes. Proper method is to splice off or yeah reveal a whole bunch more wire that way you can actually tie these together I believe what it, uh, the proper terminology it's called like a lineman splice or something and that's how you want to do it but that's not how I'm going to do it because I'm not a very wise man.
No. Um, this won't be as strong mechanically, but on a battery that is completely internal, it should not make any difference whatsoever. Okay. And then, by nature of being heat shrink, Oh, well, that's completely out. Well, shit. Okay. I'll use the heat gun. Okay. And that is the improper way to install a new battery in your Game Boy Micro. And uh, just for verification, see that works just fine on the original. That is taped in. Pop that bad boy in there. Should not use a metal tool to insert this because the uh, contacts are slightly uh, exposed. There, and that'll fit in there. I don't want to dump that out to show you, but it'll fit. It's flush. It's smaller than the original. Boots up just fine. And is just fine. So there we go. Now I have a now I have a new battery for my micro while I wait for a uh, official, not official, but properly sized replacement. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.